Hey everyone, welcome to We Drink and We Farm Things. I am still your uh, temporary solo host, Bev Ross, uh, and I'm so happy to have you here with us today. Um, I'm saying us because yes, the intro and outro is just me, um, but the meat and potatoes of this episode is Sam and I um, because we are doing another best of episode uh, and it is the episode What the Buck. And so the reason why uh, this episode is coming out now is because um, tis the season to start thinking about whether or not you want to have baby goats in the spring. And when you want an endless supply of baby goats on your farm, the obvious answer seems to be to get a buck so that you can breed on demand. But the decision to add buck goats to your farm or not is something that should be taken um, pretty seriously because there's a lot to consider when you're thinking about adding another animal to your farm. Um, so we discuss the pros and cons in this episode of owning a buck goat. Uh, and in the outro section of this episode, I will share some additional insight into how uh it's been going for me having bucks now that I am an entire breeding season into having them. So before we get into it, uh, I would like to thank our drink peep this episode, which is our friend Elizabeth Steves, and she is at Steelo2 over on the Instagram. So cheers, lady. When it comes to treats, there are so many options out there for you to choose from for the health and well-being of your dog. But many popular brands contain low quality animal protein from various sources and unnatural fillers. Instead of choosing a treat made with mystery meat, nourish your pup with something better Vroomies. Vroomies are loaded with healthy grub protein from black soldier fly grubs and no filler ingredients. Pound for pound, whole dried grubs have more protein than a prime rib steak, and they contain a complete amino acid profile, meaning that they provide all of the amino acids that are an essential part of your dog's diet. In fact, they contain more amino acids than beef, chicken, and pork, which makes Grubly's Dog Snacks Roomies a healthy choice for your special pup. Save 25% off your first order of Grubly Farms Roomies with code DRINKANDFARM25 at grublyfarms.com. Welcome to We Drink and We Farm Things. This is the farm comedy podcast that is an adult happy hour for the farming community. We drink adult beverages, talk about the ups and downs of farming things, and give zero clucks about not having the perfect farm life. We keep it real with you and share the mistakes we've made and what we've learned so you can feel less alone in this farm thing. We drink things, we farm things, we drink and farm things. Ooh, that got a little messy. Ooh. that's what she said <laughs> gosh hmm. well hey there sam oh hi Beth. we're off to a great start <laughs> i mean what can i say what did you open over there i opened a gosh it's so messy over here seventh sun brewing company and it is decorative gourd and here i will show the can oh. to the youtubers because it's very Cute. very pretty so this is an ale brewed with roasted butternut squash and spices. Mm, very seasonal. It is. I have been very excited to drink this beer, um, but I'm not going to lie. I almost skipped it and just went straight to the Christmas beers because they were at my grocery store yesterday and I was real excited. Oh, <laughs> I need to go get some Christmas beers too. Yeah. So what did you open over there? So I opened a Samuel Adams Jack O pumpkin ale mm. and it is deemed on the back of the label of uh, the perfect fall beer. So it is kind of a basic pumpkin type thing, but you know, you gotta drink them while you got them. So I mean, I did today. life is short. Drink the beer you want to, when you yes. want to, regardless of the season or not, no judgment here. And I did pour it into a coffee mug <laughs> and it's our give zero clucks Christmas mug. So I feel like that's perfect. I'm transitioning from one season to another today. Oh, I, I'm wearing no. one of our old Christmas yes. shirts. Um, this is one of our first year Christmas shirts, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, yep. There it is for the YouTubes. <laughs> yes. 
Our drink peep this episode is our friend Kayla Wood, and she is at Honey Creek Homestead over on the Instagram. So cheers, lady. Cheers. All right. It is time for this month's Henny and Rue Corner. And for all of you on YouTube, we're going to do a little unboxing so you can see what we got. And we'll talk through it as well for our listeners. Is your sweet? Okay. So, Bev, what was your favorite thing in the November box? Oh my gosh, the November box was really, really cool. Um, I'm gonna steal your favorite thing though. Um, <laughs> Knew it because we can share, right? Uh, yeah. Look, I don't know what it is about these sea salt Ugh. caramels. They're like the most amazing thing ever. I told Sam I was going to open them and just eat them while we were recording and put myself on mute. That's how good they are. (laughs) Yeah. And I wait for them every year because as far as I know, you can't get them anywhere else. (laughs) Yeah. We're going to have to do some detective work. There is an email on here. (gasps) What? So maybe you just have to email this person. Oh that's a possibility well I guess we know what we're doing later Mm -hmm. (laughs) plans made yes what was your favorite thing out of the box so I was a little confused at first by this item because I did open this earlier today um I found a bracelet in there and I was like did somebody that was packaging this lose their bracelet because this is really (laughs) cute and then I looked at the little card in the box that tells you what you got and it's egg yolk and venturine beaded bracelet and it says a piece for your fall jewelry collection that subtly says i'm a chicken keeper oh yeah i like it so it is it's cute though because it is very subtle and yeah i don't have i don't do a lot of jewelry stuff but this is cute Mm -hmm. this i'll do yeah i dig it So the next item in the box, um, and we actually got two of these, thank goodness, or at least I did. Maybe that was a mistake. (laughs) You got the bonus box. I only got one. (laughs) Well, look at, I'm, I'm the favorite. (laughs) You are. Gosh, darn it. (laughs) So, uh, this is the Henny and Rue three in one vitamins, electrolytes, and probiotics for poultry. Um, we're in the middle of a transition season. Every time we get one of these, we talk about how important this stuff is. Um, put it in your waters. So your chickens will thank you. Um, it will help them get through the transitions. And I always keep a couple packages of this on hand because any sick chicken I get um, or injured chicken I get gets this as their water and they like it. Yes. One of the other things we got is Hen Healer multi purpose ointment. And this is great for injuries and frostbite prevention. So it's that time of year. It's starting to get a little chilly. So great thing to have on hand. We also got this mealworms cluck o nut. Um, and it's amazing. <laughs> yes. It's a coconut. It is stuffed full of things. Your chickens will go crazy over. Um, and the best part is this coconut is reusable. So, um, once they're done, take this coconut and then you can refill it with whatever you want. So I have like, um, it's like a bacon fat and Mm -hmm. grublies and like seed mix thing that I do that I've made donuts for my chickens out of. You could totally make that and just like slap it in the coconut, put it in the freezer and then give it to them. I love that. We also got this biozyme defense boost, which provo- promotes feed and water intake during times of stress. So say all of a sudden it's 10 degrees at night, maybe put that in your chicken's water, give them a little boost. They'll thank you for it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and these are super cool and super cute too. We got labels for egg cartons. Um, and they are just so cute. Um, they even came with the safety labels that you can stick to your egg cartons. If you sell your eggs, 
um, which is really great. So this company actually creates these labels. Um, the company is called Chicks and Charmers. Um, and so you can have mm-hmm. custom labels for your, uh, for your egg cartons printed by these folks. And they're super cute. They look like they're easy to peel off and slap on. Um, I don't really sell eggs yet, um, because I'm an egg hoarder and I just eat them all. (laughs) (laughs) There are worse things you could hoard. Um, but the next time somebody does something really nice for me, um, I can always drop off some eggs for them in these cute little cartons just to like make the gift extra special. I mean, the eggs are what they're really getting, but everybody likes cute packaging. Yes. The last thing in our box is this be tastic herbs so this is the chicken tree and coop herbs that includes dried insects dried flowers and bee pollen yummy, bee pollen yummy. has been showing up in a lot of things lately <laughs> must be like the new coconut oil <laughs> i think it might be yes so that was our november box as i rebox after the unbox um and like we opened the show with today, if you're interested, go to uh, honeyandrew.com, use code drink and farm to get 10% off your first box. We haven't seen any spoilers for December yet, but I'm going to guess with the holidays up coming up, there's some cute stuff. There's also the winter box. If you want to check any of that out, go to honeyandrew.com. That's right. So today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of owning male goats, AKA yes. Yes, 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 yes. Cause we both now have them and there are a lot of pros and there are also probably about the same amount of cons <laughs> and you really have to love goats to have bucks. I think. <laughs> I think so too. Um, and I think this is going to be a really good conversation, especially for those who maybe have started their goat herd and they're trying to decide what they want to do for a goat breeding program. Uh, and also maybe for those who haven't taken the leap quite yet, and they're making their plans, Uh, because one of the things that we've learned and we've talked about a lot on this podcast is how, when you can plan ahead for the bigger things that you know you want to do on your farm, it's just going to make your life easier in the long run. So this is a great conversation to start with. Um, if you aren't sure if butt goats are for you. <laughs> yes. So we'll, we'll get the cons out of the way so we can end on higher notes. Yeah. And the first one's pretty obvious. They smell real bad, especially this time of year. Well, yeah. and it's not just that they smell, um, they smell and they feel gross. And, <laughs> yeah. and not only do they smell and they feel gross, but everything that they come in contact with that stench just permeates. So mm-hmm. your clothes, your boots, even if they are uh, knee high plastic boots. Like I went out there and I was using my feet to stop them from like going around the gate. And so they like rubbed all across those boots. And then I slipped them on later for something. And I was like, what's that smell? I was like, Oh my God, it's my boots. (laughs) (laughs) So for anybody that doesn't know why they smell, um, bucks have, a penis obviously mm-hmm. that usually stays inside their body unless they want to use it but this time of year especially they extend that out even if females aren't really in their pen with them or around and then they do this really cute thing where they like cock to the side no pun intended and uh squirt urine in their face mm-hmm. or at another goat or at you, if you're not careful. Um, I knock on wood have not been peed on, but my husband has. I've been peed on already and I've only had butt coats for a few months. (laughs) Oh, congratulations. Oh yeah. That's um, why they smell. Apparently the ladies like that. uh, They do. 
Um, and I've seen it. Um, I've seen a lady goat not be interested until he has done that thing. And then they perk up and they're like, oh, oh, okay. That's what oh, you mean here. It. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> there is a biological reason for it. They're not doing it just to be gross. Um, but it does require that you plan ahead. So like when you're going to do chores and you're going to have to deal with the bucks, you want to make sure that you're not wearing the clothes that you're like going to have to go to work yeah. in or run a yep. meeting in or like spend the rest of the day in. Um, my plan is actually, I'm going to get a pair of overalls that just mm-hmm. hang on my, um, like, uh, coat rack outside next to my coat. And I'm going to start just pulling those on in the morning over my clothes. So I'll order it yeah. one size bigger. So that way I can go handle them and take better care of them and not be worrying about getting smell on me so bad. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I, that's why I like, I don't typically wear like fleece pajama pants. Um, and I usually do chores in my pajama pants so that I can come inside and change into the pants that I'm going to wear for the rest of the day, just in case. Mm -hmm. Um, so that is why I'm a fan of pajama chores um, especially this time of year. Cause you just don't know most of the time they leave me alone. Cause they're preoccupied with their food, which I can dump over the half wall, um, and not deal with them, but like even picking up their door. Cause it just slides right in and comes out like that smells like goat. Mm-hmm. So if that falls on me or something, then yeah, I'm probably going to stink a little. <laughs> yeah. That is why I'm glad my sense of smell is returning after COVID because, um, I didn't know if I ever smelled or not. And like, who's going to tell me like maybe Matt, but his was gone too for a while (laughs) as they only your best friends will tell you that you smell like butt goat. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, the next con of owning a male goat or a buck is that you need to have a permanent area away from your does for this guy. And he can't be alone either. So like you need a permanent area and he needs a friend. Right. (laughs) So either another buck or a weather. Yes. I would recommend from my own personal experience, I would recommend another buck Mm -hmm. because the buck will turn the weather into his bitch. Yes. I was just going to say that it's a sad (laughs) life Sad for that weather friend. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) Whereas with the buck, like they're, they're one of them's going to be the alpha. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other one at least has the hormones to drive that fight. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got the, literally he's got the cojones to back it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're pretty inappropriate so, with yeah. each other also. <laughs> like, yes. so just be aware if you have, but it's mutual. Groups. Yeah. It's mutual. <laughs> Neither of them seems to be bothered by it. Um, it's like a show out there all the time. (laughs) Yeah. I will say though, um, one of the things that I wasn't really prepared for now that they're both full size is that they will butt heads to the point that somebody's head could start bleeding. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think one of my goats bucks head is tougher than the other ones. (laughs) It's usually four little waffles that ends up with the bloody head but it scabs over. It's fine. Just keep an eye on it. Um, one of the other things too, is just butting heads and a blood vessel broke in Toot's ear and it like filled up with blood and you can either have it drained or it's just going to shrivel up since we're not showing our goats and it doesn't affect like create a birth defect or anything like that. Um, that was just another gross thing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, like you said, they can't be alone. So you have to also prepare for what that means for both the goats in there. Yeah. Um, and not only do they have to have a permanent area away from their ladies, there are some things that you want to keep in mind. You want to make sure that it's strong enough to keep them from busting <laughs> into their ladies. Um, yep. I'm pretty sure Twig climbed the gate into the Doe's area one day. It was like so many things had gone wrong here that week. I don't even think I shared it to Instagram. Like I just walked out there and just one of my bucks is just in with all the does. And I was like, well, that's par for the course right now. And like, it Mm -hmm. didn't even strike me as anything unusual. (laughs) (laughs) I just grabbed him and put him back where he belonged and he was fine. 
and he hasn't done it since then. So maybe he didn't climb the gate, um, but the gate wasn't open or anything. Um, yeah. cause that's happened. Cause I tend to just kick gates behind me. And since oh. they're next to each other, if it bounces back, especially if I'm doing chores in the dark and I don't see it, like then everyone's just mixing. And, and if you're really trying to plan your pairings and your goats, births and all of that it can be really frustrating um so I have no idea if to again end up surprised knocking anybody up but at the time I had already exposed everyone once so I was just mm. like nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean he could have just been in there terrorizing the ladies probably yeah, yeah they looked they looked very annoyed you know that face um, yes I do and they can breathe through the fence it has happened um I don't know. So it's important to remember too, that, you know, you have to think of your setup for what you're willing to put up with, I think is the word that I'm always looking for. It's whatever you're willing to deal with on your farm. And so um, my does are actually going to move over to the donkeys and the donkeys are moving over to where the does are. So there will be one pasture in between the bucks and the ladies. Um, and that's just for my peace of mind, because I'm a control freak like that over here. So (laughs) (laughs) Um, the last thing we'll talk about today, I'm sure there's more cons, but we wanted to kind of keep the list short and sweet. Um, the cost of feeding. So for him and maybe his pal, um, or pals, depending on what you want to do. Um, so there's that extra cost you have to consider. So one of the articles I read said it could be roughly between three to $400 per year. And that really depends on the breed and what exactly like your feeding program is. That seems like a lot to me, but I've never sat down and figured out what I spend per goat Mm -hmm. because I'd probably crawl under my desk and start drinking (laughs) if I did that. Um, So just keep that in mind. I mean, your hay bill, your hay bill probably won't change that much for one extra goat, especially if it's a Nigerian dwarf, like we have. Um, but if you feed any kind of pelleted feed, Mm -hmm. um, that you might see a little increase there. Um, so just keep that in mind. Cause that is super important. Anytime you add a, an animal, like check what those feed prices are, especially right now. Cause everything's up about a dollar or two where I'm, I'm at. Everything's up and I'm having a harder time finding things. My goat feed yep. hasn't been at the feed store the last two times I've been there. Oof. So I'm starting to think that I'm going to have to switch to something else yeah. in the interim. If I run out before I can, find you could it. order it. Um, yeah, I can. And that's going to, that's next on my option. I'm trying to, um, uh, just reduce the number of things I have delivered by mail. Cause it's so much like the poor UPS guy is here all the time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> unload the ships then (laughs) right I know it's true I don't know if that's the problem for feed or not like I should probably figure out where my feed comes from or even like the bags it could Mm -hmm. be the bags it could be the bags yeah there's so many things in the supply chain that affect those kinds of things that it's hard to say what exactly the holdup is um but in addition to the cost of feeding your goat um also think about the time that it's going to take to care for another goat it's another Mm. hoof you have Mm -hmm. to trim hooves on another hoof it's another goat you have to trim hooves on um, mm-hmm. another pasture you have to bring feed to, cause they can't live with the does. Um, don't do that to your does. <laughs> so no. it's another place to deliver food. It's another place to maintain. You might have to muck it or move a house or, you know, however you do your, um, your setup uh, and more minerals. You have to keep that mineral dish full, especially for your bucks. Cause they require more nutrition than your weathers will because of what they do. Um, so just, you know, kind of keep that in mind and how it's going to affect your routine. And if that's something that you want to do twice a day, every day for the rest of those goats lives. Mm-hmm. So now we'll talk about the pros because there are benefits after we just talked a lot of crap about bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, And one of those is that, and we've kind of talked about this before, is having one around makes it easier to tell when your does are in heat because they'll be super attracted to him and yearn for his affection. So maybe stand by the fence closest to where they are and scream their little heads off if they're extra like expressive. I've had one doe because my does in Buckshire fence line, just like slide her body across the fence and like part her vagine right there (laughs) 
And I'm like, that's how it breathes through the fence, but he can't quite position yeah. himself. If you're on YouTube, you can see me doing weird things right now. Um, <laughs> so I'm not sure what, if that would be successful or not for them. Um, but yes, she has done that before. I've only see her, seen her do it once and now she just screams and stands there. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot easier to tell because that source is close by and they yeah. know it. They do. I've got one standing out there right now. Um, and she's leaning her body on the fence. I haven't seen her back up to it quite yet, um, <laughs> but I saw her this morning and I know she was in heat. So I already knew what my plans were going to be for tonight. <laughs> and I went out there this afternoon just to double check. And she's just hanging out over there by them. And both boys are pacing the fence, screaming their heads off. And she's just oh standing gosh. there. And I'm like, come on, seriously. Like, it's a good thing. I don't have close neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, the next pro of owning a male goat, and it was actually the main reason why I made the decision to go ahead and get bucks is that you don't have to take your does or your female goats off of the property to breed them. That was, if anyone listened to last falls or the fall before's, Mm -hmm. um, episodes, that was, and I, it was an ordeal. I have no other way to describe it. Like I was obsessed with having to check for signs of heat. And then I would have to pack my goats up and drive them 45 minutes away. And oh my gosh, it was the time. I have no idea how I got anything done. That was all I did was check goat signs and drive them to dates that weren't successful. (laughs) It's yeah. And it might've been because it was stressful for everybody. Cause that mm-hmm. is a lot. That's a long drive too. Yeah, it is. Um, and you know, and you got to think about how you're transporting your does too. Like, yeah. um, you know, I don't have a livestock trailer, so my does were in crates in either the back of my car or in the back of our truck, which neither of those are really ideal or very comfortable for them. So yeah, you're stressed well. out AF. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want it either. Mm-mm. I wouldn't either. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame them. <laughs> the other thing to consider too, um, if you're not going to do what they call driveway breeding, which was what you were doing. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes you can like drop your dough off for like a month or so at somebody's farm, or they can drop their buck off. But if you had to, um, drop your dough off to hang out, then you might have to ask your, Buck's owner to milk the dough out for you. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so if you know, obviously you wouldn't have to do that if it's her first time being a mama, but the third, second, third, fourth, all the other times you would have to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also the buck smell kind of makes the milk a little smell a little funky too and it's mm-hmm. mostly just because he's been all up on her oh, um yeah. yeah no privacy so you wouldn't really want that anyway <laughs> um so yeah that's another logistical thing that you'd have to work out with the buck owner um maybe even have to pay extra for I don't mm-hmm. know. yeah um and you know something else uh that you had added in here that I forgot to mention is um when you're taking your does somewhere else whether it's to breed them like by a driveway breeding which is where you just show up they do their thing and then you take your go home mm-hmm. um or you're leaving there and there for 30 days you're exposing your herd to the risk of disease every time you leave your farm with them and i don't say that to like fear monger or make you afraid to right. like, always leave your farm but it's just, um, something to be aware of, um, so that you can plan accordingly, you know, test your goats often, any farm you go to ask them to test their goats and, and look at the results and make sure that they actually are legit and mm-hmm. negative things like that. So having a buck on hand keeps you from having to go through all of that. It's just yeah, kind of less work for you in the long run on that end. It's like, you're making trades. Yes. <laughs> Like you said, what do you want to put up with? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the best pro of them all is that you basically have baby goats on demand, kind of. Hallelujah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's easier to plan if your buck's there all the time. Um, 
and baby goats are just freaking adorable and seeing newly birthed baby goats just never gets old or at least it hasn't for me and I've had I think it's about two or three years now almost three years of being present for that um so yeah it's pretty neat and that's that's the goal right yeah I mean that is the goal I've only had one birth here on the farm um but it was amazing I'll never forget it and I'm knocking on wood and crossing all my fingers that I'll end up with more <laughs> this year. Um, my bucks are pretty young, so it's possible that they aren't quite fully functional yet. Um, but that's okay. We'll just. But they're practicing. They are practicing their little hearts out. It is <laughs> the most adorable little thing you've ever seen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. So, what has been your favorite part of having goats? Uh, butt goats Sam have you do you have any favorite parts like to end this on a really high note or are are they just kind of tolerable um you're asking me during rut season so that is like really hard to pick but I will say that Loki aka Tudors um he lived in the house I got him when he was like a week old so he lived in the house for a while so even though he grosses me out right now and kind of pisses me off sometimes, um, and it is super strong, so I can't control him. Um, is I mean, he was in the house and he wore a little outfit. So there's that. And then waffles was, um, from came out of Maya and she was the first goat kid on our farm. So that they're just very special goats because of, um, kind of the journey with them so that's what I like about it right now mm, mm, they stink (laughs) and they're rude (laughs) what about you they are rude they're very pushy um so my goats are still really young so I think that our rut um, issues haven't really hit us yet. Like don't get oh, wait till next they year. Stink. Yeah, they stink. <laughs> um, but mine are also still really tiny so I can control yeah. them really easily still. Um, so I'm not having to deal with any of those things, but I think my favorite part is just their faces. Um, they're so handsome. Like mm-hmm. they're, they've got this adorable little like side part with the, they look so dapper and their little (laughs) beards coming in. And then their little, I call them their dirt face when they do the, um, it's the, the smelling, um, I'm going to pronounce it wrong. I think it's the Fleischman response. Yeah. I mean, there's a, or the Fleeman response. Mm -hmm. I always get it wrong, but that's what that is. They're using, um, they're using their mouth olfactory organs to smell things easier and that's what i didn't know it had a name yeah it does i just called it a dirt face yeah that's also sounds easier to pronounce it is it's way (laughs) easier to pronounce um i'm pretty sure it's the flame in response next episode will follow up on that and correct myself if i'm wrong um and um when they do their little blubber like (laughs) (laughs) it's the best it's like a really um low grumbly gobble essentially Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah so uh to wrap this up I think whether you get bucks or not is it's a really personal choice uh, yeah that feeds into what your farm goals are um and what you are personally able to take on and manage at this time (laughs) yes all right So we got some kind of bittersweet news, guys. We do. All all good things must change, right? Tis the season for changing. We just had daylight savings time. So let's throw another wrench at you guys. Daylight savings time. I'm drinking a pumpkin beverage and a Christmas mug. Your chickens are molting (laughs) and your bucks are peeing all over themselves. So what we're going to do, well, I guess what we're not going to do after today's episode is have can't even corner in the regular episodes. I know you're probably saying what the clock, what's going on, but don't worry. We're going to both have can't evens in our monthly mini sods. So we'll be sharing our can't evens while we're sharing your can't evens. Um, 
And don't worry. I know we've been using can't even corner for a lot of personal stuff lately too. We'll just make sure that gets into the regular episodes somehow. Um, maybe we'll circle a whole episode around something that we experienced and just dive a little deeper. Um, or do a dive bar. So yeah. it's not really going away all the way. We're just restructuring our podcast episode structures just a teensy bit. Yeah. We're going to try this on and see how it fits. Um, our episode lengths have just been a little too long. Um, they are harder to edit. They cost more money to edit. They take up more space when they are super long. And so this will allow us to fit within what our um, budget and current constraints allow us to have. So I don't know, maybe we'll do a stretch goal to bring them back or something. One of these. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Go over and sign up for our Patreon. If you're Mm -hmm. like, what the hell? Uh, go to patreon.com slash drink and farm and sign up to be a patron. You can do that starting at $2 a month, but really you want to do the $5 a month one. Cause you get a lot more stuff if you do that for sure. Um, so yeah, then we can afford to pay our lovely employees more money yeah. so we can have longer episodes because <laughs> this thing does not happen without our team. That is for no. sure. <laughs> Thanks, Max and Katie. (laughs) Yes, thank you. Um, But we aren't going to leave you hanging entirely. We're going to do one more this week, and then we'll make that switch. We just thought the timing was good with the holidays. We're about to get into some really holiday-themed episodes, too. Um, And we kind of want a little break ourselves, if we're being Mm -hmm. totally honest. It's true. But Beth, what's your last regular episode can't even this week? My last regular episode can't even is a doozy. Oh, a rare penis plant in the Netherlands just bloomed for the first time in over two decades. I feel like there are so many jokes there that I can't pick one. Yes, it is correct. Oh my God. Okay. I just... <laughs> I'll make sure, I'll make sure we put this, one of these pictures <laughs> into the YouTube so you guys can't see it, but you guys need to click on this and look at this plant. Holy wow. Yeah. I mean, it's huge, right? Yes. I mean, and this is definitely a shower. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So <sighs> in the Netherlands, Uh, There is a plant, it's super rare, uh, and it grows into a tall phallic shape. It's called the penis plant. Um, And this is actually the only the third time that this species has flowered in Europe since 1997. Wow. Yeah. So it's kind of a big deal. And that's according to the University of Leiden's (laughs) Botanical Garden. Um, This particular penis plant is six years old. And the scientific name for it is, uh, Karen from just grow something podcast is going to correct this for me later. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, amorphophallus desis Sylvia. Um, I just had to say it because of the amorphophallus because that's in the name (laughs) of the scientific (laughs) name for the plant. Um, this plant was cultivated by a garden volunteer, uh, and they first noticed the flower bud around mid September and it took a little over a month and the bud has become about half a meter tall, which is about three feet. And the narrow stem of it is reaching up about two meters, which is around six feet high. So like that, it, just to give it some scale, this is a huge plant guys. And there are very few botanical gardens that have this plant in their collection. Um, so that makes it pretty rare. Uh, this plant is native to the tropical rainforest of Indonesia. So it requires a very warm and humid growing environment. And so it's kind of difficult to grow in Europe. So that's sort of why this was newsworthy. Um, <laughs> but in case anyone's wondering, and this just felt so on topic for this episode, um, it emits a terrible pungent odor, <gasps> kind of like rotting flesh. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> and that smell is what helps gardeners predict whether the plant is going to flower. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
so there's some more information about the plant in the article that's going to be in the show notes. Go check it out. Um, I had no idea that this plant was a thing, but I saw it and I just like couldn't even because it's just a good reminder that we are not the only people with the uh, humor of a middle (laughs) schooler. (laughs) Yeah. Some scientists named that plant with the word phallus in it. Yeah. They sure did. So if anyone says that uh, you can't be smart and have a weird sense of humor, they are not correct. <laughs> <laughs> you are wrong, sir or ma'am. <sighs> All right. So what is your can't even this week? So my can't even is that I'm super excited that I have finally put in my perennial bulb garden. Um. I ordered this stuff from Michigan bulb back in August and I just got it all like they, (laughs) I spent a lot of money, but it came in four shipments. There's one more coming with like just a couple of things, but, um, I got all kinds of tulips. I got some peonies. I got geraniums. I got wildflowers. Um, I got this really cool thing that'll like be like a wall of flowers and they're purple um so I one of the beds that I had this year where I had all my pumpkin well all my cucumbers and little pumpkins um I ripped all that out and cleaned it up uh I knew I was gonna put my flower garden there because I want it for the bees and stuff and it'll bloom spring through late summer with all the different stuff I have in there Um, and obviously it'll come back every year, hopefully. Um, I knew that was going to be there and my little dog, you probably guys, you guys probably never heard her or saw her because she's super grumpy the last like five years. Um, and these two numbskulls that are in here with me all the time are obnoxious. Um, but she died in mid October while I had COVID like seriously guys, like um, so I put her in there. So she has her own full blown flower garden now. So, I love that so much. Yeah. That's such a great tribute to her. Yes. Oh. So, um, I don't know what I'll do. I, I can't do a flower garden for every <laughs> dead dog. Um, <laughs> but she was small enough that she was a little chihuahua mix. So she was small enough that she just kind of fit in there. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I thought that was super cool to do that. And then I probably planted like between a hundred and 150 bulbs in there. Oh, some of them, like you just need two inch spacing, mm-hmm. but the peonies need a little more. So she's got a, what is it? A sorbet peony, like right by her. And then some daffodils too. Oh, I love yes. that on top of a bunch of stuff. Um, so hopefully it looks really good and then I'll have lots of pictures next year to put on the Instagram and just have some cut flowers too. So yeah, I'm super excited about it. But the main reason that I wanted to bring it up was, um, I probably did that with the weeding and stuff. It probably took me like three hours, but what made the planting part a lot faster was I have this auger drill attachment, um, so some of the bulbs needed to go down like six inches. So this thing was just super easy to use to make holes. And then I even like just really quick for the stuff that didn't need to be as deep or could be densely planted, just made like a little row with it. So it was super cool. So we'll make sure we link to that in the show notes. Um, so if you all want one for next year, <laughs> I highly recommend it. You have one too, or something similar, right? I do. Mine is a little shorter and a little smaller because it's just for like plant starts. Um, it was what I got mine for and it worked so well. That was how I planted my corn patch and my Mm -hmm. um, pumpkin patch in just like about an hour and a half was I had help and I had that to drill all the holes. (laughs) Yes. We're here to make things easier. And this is not an expensive tool either. I, it Mm-mm. was under 20 bucks. So it's so Oops. worth the money in my opinion. Um, so make sure you guys check that out. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely check it out. Um, cause it's totally worth it for sure. Great. Um, so make sure you're sending us your can't even the best way to do that is to put them into our Facebook group. Um, or if you're not in our Facebook group and you don't want to be in Facebook group and you don't want anything to do with Facebook or meta or whatever it's going to be called, you can also email those to us at drinkandfarm at gmail.com. Uh, we will add those in and we will for sure see it if it comes to our email. Most definitely. Yes. And be sure and leave us a review. We read one Apple podcast review on the podcast, um, per a week, or we will play your review. If you would like to call our drink and farm phone number and leave your review in a voicemail, both of those will get you entered into a drawing uh, for an exclusive coffee mug that is not and will never be in the shop. So you definitely want to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so no new review this week. So go leave us one because tis the new month. Mm-hmm. And you guys, uh, we've already done two episodes. There's a few more. So your chances are pretty good for winning. Mm-hmm. That's right. And I know we've already mentioned our Patreon, but I want to say one more thing about the $5 level. We have a series called Straight No Chaser. It drops every Monday. It's super quick, like five to 10 minutes. And we shoot it to you straight with a fun topic and try to keep it pretty factual. But we also have our opinions. (laughs) I'm sorry. Watching the dogs wrestle behind you and it's hilarious. I can't stop laughing. This is my life. (laughs) Be sure. Hit- <laughs> Sorry. Let's go ahead. Be sure and hit the subscribe button and download the episode when you listen because this helps more people like you find us. And while you're listening to us, you can share that you're listening to us over on your Instagram in your stories. And if you do that, tag us at Drink and Farm. We're going to send you a promo code just for that episode. That'll give you a percentage off in our merch shop. And you want that with all the holiday stuff. Be sure to take a look at the show notes. You'll find links to anything that we discussed in this episode, a survey to tell us how we're doing, all of our social media goodness and our merch. You can access our show notes by going to drinkandfarm.com slash 179. That will take you straight to all those awesome links. So that's it guys. And I have doggy MMA happening behind me. I knew when I reconfigured my office, this was gonna happen. It Um, looks good though. Just like another reason for you to like log in and check us out on YouTube sometime. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so until next time, drink, farm, and give zero clucks. We <laughs> drink guys. things, Bye. we farm things, we drink and farm things. Have you checked out the Drink and Farm merch shop lately? It's time you do. The shop has just been updated with the latest designs, which means you can drink, farm, and give zero clucks in style. We have a great selection of quality tees, tanks, lightweight zip-up hoodies, notebooks, and so much more. Plus, every purchase from our shop supports producing this show, which means we can keep bringing you the content you love. To shop, go to drinkandfarm.com slash shop. And Patreon peeps, don't forget you get a sweet discount on every purchase at the Gifty Peep tier and above. The link to Patreon is in the navigation bar in our shop so you can learn more about joining or look up the latest code in a jiffy. That link again is drinkandfarm.com slash shop. And thanks for being here. Well, I hope you enjoyed this best of episode, What the Buck? And I'm really excited to share some additional information with you now um, about how my buck uh, keeping has been going. And I can tell you this right now that uh, having baby goats has definitely been easier. It hasn't been instant by any means. Um, I do keep them separate, so I try not to have, you know, too many surprises. And so far, knock on wood, I have not um, had any surprise goats, Um, though I have had trouble with uh, making sure that I wrote down breeding dates so that I know when baby goats are going to be due. So you might remember that more recently uh, when Eclipse was having her two kids. I honestly just had no idea when they were going to be born because I forgot to write it down. So that ended up being um, a little bit of a hiccup. 
But I do have a couple tips that I'll share with you uh, on how you can make sure that you don't forget uh, when you have bred your goats. Uh, and the first one is I always take a picture when I'm getting ready to do a pairing. And no, I don't get weird and like take a picture of the actual, you know, like doing the deed. Um, but I take a picture because it uploads into my Google Photos and it has a date on it which makes it really easy to count forward for when a goat is going to be due if I figure out later that a goat is bred um, because either I've done a blood draw or she hasn't come back into heat. So I can use that picture as evidence uh, that I did indeed put them together on that date and that will be super helpful. Uh, another thing that I do is I like to share it on Instagram in my stories when I'm getting ready to put a pairing together. Um, I can go back to my stories on Instagram and take a peek and see uh, what I've shared there in my history. Uh, and that will let me know. And I can use the notes from that uh, to be able to tell who I've paired when. Um, and sometimes in Instagram stories, you can put a little more detail, um, about the actual pairing, which, uh, is kind of, um, some nice information to be able to go back to without having to write it down and remember to write it down. Um, the other thing that I do is sometimes I remember to mark it in my Google calendar. Uh, that would of course be in an ideal world and we all know that I don't live in an ideal world. So chances are, I'm going to forget to do that. Um, but having the picture evidence and the uh, Instagram story evidence is super, super helpful. So I hope that that helps you with that. If you do have buck goats and you find that you're struggling with, uh, knowing when goats are actually due. So the other thing about having goats, uh, butt goats, that has been um, kind of interesting is that not every doe has actually been able to be bred. Um, even though I know that my bucks work, they've been fully tested and everything is good to go, which means that I have a doe that I don't believe can be bred and I'm not really sure why exactly. Uh, I'm not going to dig into it. She is about five years old now at this point or almost five. So um, I do think that maybe um, it just took too long to try to get her bred and she is not going to be successful. So I'm in the process of trying to rehome her with her um, brother Coop um, as pets because I just don't have a ton of space here uh, for pets because my breeding program is really up and running, which brings me to the next thing that I wanted to tell you about, which is that uh, deciding what to do with all the babies is getting harder and harder. Um, obviously, I want to keep the does because I want to grow them out and see how my breeding program is working. Um, so I've been keeping a lot of them. I am going to stop keeping all of them. Well, actually, yeah, I haven't been keeping a lot of them. I've been keeping all of them, but I'm going to stop keeping all of them, uh, this coming breeding season, uh, so that I can share in the joy of the baby doe goats. And I feel pretty good about the goats that I've been able to produce on my farm now. So that feels good. Um, but I'm also, uh, looking at just like, raising milk does for the homestead. So uh, if I have some does that get bred and I'm not really sure who the father is and I don't want to mess around with DNA testing, uh, by adding that as an option on my um, goat offerings, it'll help to uh, allow me to offer excellent um, milking genetic goats, um, but without the price tag of show goats because I won't register them if I don't know um, who the father is. So that's something that I'm kind of playing around with in my mind. Also, I have a couple of unregistered does now that I am breeding, uh, and so far they've been really fabulous milkers also. Um, so that's something else that I'm looking at. Uh, and I'm also considering thinking about trying to find a local butcher that I can partner with um, so that I can start making cured goat meats um, for goat charcuterie. And um, the reason I'm really interested in this is um, my friend Silent Rolling Acres. Uh, I'll link to her in the show notes. Uh, she has a goat charcuterie kit that she mails out. I'm on that list and I get it every quarter and it's absolutely amazing. Um, but in case you didn't know, I also own a shop locally here uh, in our town and we're working on what we're going to put in that shop. It's definitely going to be food related. 
And I realized that having a local source of uh, goat charcuterie might be something really cool for that space. So I'm playing around um, with that idea. Uh, I'm also uh, in the process of trying to sell any other weathers or um, pet quality goats that I have. So you're in the Ohio area and looking for a pet goat definitely hit me up. Um, and if you're looking for a not pet goat, hit me up also because I can put you on my list for either homestead milking goats or show goats if that's what you're looking for as well. <laughs> um, and uh, the last thing that I just want to tell you about my experience with um, bucks is that one of the things that I realized um, that has happened is having so many goats on the farm, I finally run into that one goat that doesn't want to stay in the fence. So our fencing has always been really great and we've never had any problems with it until this one goat. Uh, we call him Ricky. Um, he's our free range goat, which is obviously not ideal, especially because he's a buck um, and I hate it. And I am not happy with myself that I haven't been able to figure out how to keep him in yet. But now that he's getting older and he's definitely like doing his Bucky thing, uh, it's getting more serious and we need to figure out how to keep him in the fence. So if you ever are near our farm, there might be a free range buck goat. Thankfully, he's super friendly um, and he's you know great. There's not a lot of uh, female goats in that go into heat around us, thankfully. So he hasn't tried to run off or anything, um, but it's definitely a problem that I have to get solved. And obviously solving those problems kind of takes me off my other goals and uses up time, which can be kind of difficult. So just wanted to share uh, that extra insight into what it's been like uh, owning butt goats now that I am into it for uh, more than a season. I really enjoyed it. I'm happy with my decision to own butt goats. Um, but that said, totally makes sense if you are not ready for it and driveway breeding is the way that you want to go. Uh, I'm always here to talk about that if you would like to. So for full show notes to this episode, be sure to go to drinkandfarm.com slash 218. There will be links to other great baby goat and buck, and buck episodes there for you to check out. Uh, and if you haven't yet, be sure to join our community over on Facebook. Uh, we screen folks at the door and um, our questions are easy. It's just a handful of questions. Uh, and we do monitor everything that happens in there because we want it to be a safe place for you to ask your farming questions. So don't hesitate to come and um, ask things that you think um, might feel beginnerish or like you should know because here's the truth we don't know what we don't know and we want our group to be a good place to ask those questions without getting a bunch of like snarky feedback and stuff um, and so far i feel like we've done a really great job of creating that community and creating that space for that so i wanted to invite you to come join us if you haven't yet I've got a few Patreon shout outs before we go, uh, and that is Angela Hollis, Tonya Harold, Kimberly Taylor, and DC Teitzel. Thanks so much for being a Patreon peep, and thanks to all of our Patreon peeps for making this show possible. All right, until next time, drink, farm, and give zero clucks. Bye now. <laughs>